So, nine three, you, you probably can see the pattern. It does a lot of uh, for front end development uh, for front end developers, uh, and that feature is probably one of the more monumental changes in our rendering uh, engine that we have uh, introduced since uh, uh, the first version of SXA. So with 9.3, and velocity is gone. Uh, it's gone from the platform and we cannot make use of it. So we've had a few options. Should we take n velocity? Well, okay, let's look to the forums. Okay, question, is n velocity dead? Year 2010. Yeah, let's not keep with n velocity. It's not really the engine of the future. It, 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 we really need to find something better, right? So we looked really, really hard uh, on all of the engines. We analyzed the different uh, approaches. We thought, well, okay, we have a rendering engine in Sidecore. There's Razor. Why not just use that? But how good would it be? Would you give the front-end development unlimited access uh, with Razor views? How many people do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So yes, uh, we still found two, but there is the problem that front-end developers uh, with C sharp. Uh, that's it, it. It basically is. Uh, it basically is basically uh, is a foreign a foreign syntax for them. They want work with handlebars. They work with. Uh, uh, with liquid templates, some of the some of the systems use liquid templates. Uh, we look at different implementations, uh, uh, far and wide, and really there was a one huge outlier, which is Scriven, that is absolutely fast. I mean, it's not Razor, but it comes close enough. The biggest uh, benefit of it is how much control we can exert on over the uh, over the uh, rendering process as backenders we can give as much flexibility or as little flexibility as we need we can expose only properties which is what we are doing in this first version but it is a full language it's much more complete and makes much more uh, much more sense than uh, than pure liquid uh, templating engine it is uh, it, it, it absolutely comes on top on every benchmark. Uh, it is fast to, fast to, it's based on abstract syntax trees, so it's fast to parse, uh, contrary to Razor, which requires uh, compilation. Uh, and it has, and it is a complete language. It has flow control, it has functions, it has, you know, for loops, uh, if statements, all of the, all of the good stuff. And it is very nicely extensible. Why uh, does the handlebar sound so familiar? Sorry, the handlebars, which is listed in the graph. Why right, is that so right? I, I I promise to give a shout out to David Sanfilippo. David, are you here? <laughs> there you go. Hey, David. Yes. So David David has uh, implemented handlebars, and uh, and and yeah. A great source of inspiration. Really, we we verified against the uh, handlebars for completeness, and we talked. I talked to David and 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 looked through. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we we compared the notes, and uh, you know, there is one thing that uh, why we haven't chosen handlebars, even though they are kind of more native for front end developers, is mostly for the speed, right? And you even have noticed in your blog that you want to cache those. Uh, we, we, we didn't necessarily want to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to force that, but uh, yeah, it's really amazing, amazing module and uh, you can still download it if you want to use handlebars, yeah. So, yeah. Now what we've done for, uh, what we've done for, um, for Scriven. Well, the first thing is, uh, uh, let me go back. 
So uh, what, what other aspects we really like about Scriven? It is very well documented. The language constructions, uh, the, the benchmarking, the, um, the extensibility, uh, it is a really nice and mature framework and, 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 and really uh, getting a lot of uh, traction uh, in the community. Um, so, yeah, I realized when I started to play with it that, you know, uh, a, a month or two months from now, I'm not going to remember the syntax. So basically, uh, I've written and started uh, started contributing, uh, and hopefully you will uh, you will help us. There is a Visual Studio Code uh, extension that we will be publishing. Uh, it's going to be a community-driven project, so it's not going to be something that the, you will get support any kind of support for. But I hope uh, you know that that you will be able to uh, to benefit from it, it has some uh, IntelliSense, it has syntax highlights, uh, uh, and, uh, and it, it is aware of some of the, of some of the um, uh, objects that, well, most of the objects that we're embedding out of the box uh, in Scriven. Uh, and the other thing that really, that really popped, up, popped out is the extensibility of the, of the templating engine. We have a large number of uh, uh, of uh, extensions that your front end developers are going to be able to to use there is uh, there is the, the data source item the page item the uh, the item that is moving through the rendering variant because scriven is embedded in rendering variant there is mvc model uh, a whole host of uh, sidecore functions uh, the context uh, all of those objects and all of those functions are there and we're embedding them truly sidecore way through the pipeline the same way as you can embed anything else in there. So it's not, so there's nothing that we have done with it that you can't do or replace if, if you need. So maybe enough of the talking, maybe we should just <laughs> go ahead. Oh, let me click next instead of going back. Maybe we should just show it, right? Yes, please. Okay, cool. Can you switch to, yeah. Okay, so right here we have a, a, well, a sample website, uh, and as I say, style guide site, so you will, uh, which has just some components. And in here we're using a, a promo component, uh, which shows a list of child items, um, and that's, that's basically it. So let's recreate that component. Let's make sure that we use the right data source. Do you want to show the original rendering variant of that component? Yeah, I'll show it in a bit. Okay. okay. Save this first. So right now we create or we drag and drop our new component and we'll use a scribbin list with images. We'll save it. And as you can see, it shows exactly the same content. Well, which makes sense, right? Same data source. Looking at the back end, looking into our style guide, our definitions, go our, to our rendering variants of the promo component. In here you see the list promo with images, which is just a, well, more or less traditional rendering variant. Might need to make that a bit bigger. Yeah. So it has a title, it has a subtitle. Um, it goes to all the, ch the child items and then it shows all the image, a text, and a link. Now let's go to our Scriven example. It just has a template. This template only has a multi-line text field with some syntax in there. Um, we're not expecting you to make the changes in the content editor and do all, all of that stuff. As Adam told you, um, we have a Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code extension for that. Which means that Scriven is fully compliant with Creative Exchange Live. So that's the whole reason why you see the Scriven folder in here. We have our promo components, our Scriven list promo with images variant. Still, it's still a rendering variant. It just uses a template field now. And in here we have our template. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to create the HTML. 
and to make some uh, well, modifications. So, for example, we're showing um, six items now, and let's limit that. Before I'm going to do that, I just want to make sure that I am running my goal task, and I need to do that in my theme folder. So let's go back yeah. to my style well, guide. Mark is doing that. So Scriven is, what does it mean that Scriven is fully integrated with Creative Exchange? When you export your site, all of your rendering variant Scriven templates will get um, exported together with, uh, with, the, with the styles and with the JavaScript and with the pages. So you're getting all of that on your drive. All your front-end developers can, 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 can start editing them. And with the watchers, when, if you're using Creative Exchange Live and your front-end developers might want that now that they can edit things on the drive, uh, you're with the watchers, we're just uploading them back to Sitecore and you can yeah. see yeah. the change immediately. It's what the, the terminal output says right now. It's watching Scribbin files, which is just a, a gold task that is now running. So if I go back to my Scribbin template in here, uh, let's say that I want to limit this data source to only show three items. Um, well, let's do that, limit. And since I have the extension installed, it also gives me some, uh, well, IntelliSense and some options. So let's say I want to limit it to three. Let's remove these because these are... Yeah, the Visual Studio Code extension still needs some... Yeah, still needs some logic. Uh, so. <laughs> yes, uh, it's... So now we have limited to three. My Scribble import was successful. It means that it's now been uploaded to Sycor. Let's go back to our style guide in here. Let's decrease the size. It makes it a bit more readable. And now you can see it only shows the three items. So we limited the data source to show only three items. Do you want to go, should we go quickly through the, what the template is doing? Can you go back to the code? Maybe I could, yeah. yeah. I know it, that wasn't in a script, but now I'm thinking. Yeah, sure, improvise, what it that's is. fine. Right, so, so what do we have here? We start with H2. There is an I item, which is the item that came from the rendering variant. Uh, this could be just as well I data source, However, in the variant, as you move through them, you can get a query so that can uh, can differ from the data source. But there is a number of uh, there is a number of items that are embedded, and the Visual Studio Code extension has some uh, some uh, intelligence to show you the those options. Uh, and then you can just do dot and field value, and that will generate a field renderer. So just by having just by having the yeah. So my, uh, Mark is showing you the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the embedded items. Uh, and the, those items that are embedded also have uh, a number of properties. So you can call children like uh, Mark is doing uh, in the line nine. There is I item. Well, if there is a property has children, true or false, right? If it has children, let's look inside and let's go through the children uh, so for the I data source, let's get all, chi all every child of the of the data source. You can limit it to three, or you can just uh, take the last three. You can do offsets, uh, all kind of things. All of those benefits we just get for free with Scriven. Uh, the sidecore sidecore extensions are just those embedded items plus properties uh, of those items and plus extensions like being you being able to render the field. Right. Okay, let's go ahead. We just got the five minute sign, so we probably okay. have three left now. Yes. Um, we can do a lot of stuff within our scrimmage template, uh, as Adam said. So, for example, we have our promo link, which right now is just um, well, outputting using a field renderer, so it just shows you the link. But what, I, what if we just want to add some additional properties? Um, let's say that we want to use an SE field. In this case, we're going to go to the child item because we are in a for each loop. And in this, we're going to say promo link. We'll save our changes. And as you notice, there's a data attribute one and a value one, and uh, the same for two, which means that you can now add your own data attributes a lot easier than it is with, well, standard uh, variants. And now refreshing this. We're going to have two links, one from And the we made a error, for, uh, it's a double. Little, yeah. Your little That's my feature. Yeah. Let's refresh it again. We now have two links, 
And if I inspect this link, you'll notice somewhere there should be a data attribute. In here, data attribute one equals value one. Um, apart from that, we also thought of uh, the, well, the end users. Um, so within Cycle, you could use edit frames. You can use those same edit frames within uh, Scribbin. So let's say that we want to define an edit frame. Uh, we do this on the I child, and we're going to point to the promo item edit frame, which we already created before this session. And then here we need to say end edit frame. We'll save it again. Let me remove the inspector. And right now you can also just do all your well, edit frame operations. So you can change the order here. Uh, you can add new uh, uh, new items and stuff like that. That's well just traditional cycle. So scripting is really powerful. Really, uh, it can do a lot of stuff. Um, we well, just touched on the features. Yeah. There is, uh, I've spent the whole week, I've, I've, we've created 25 pages documentation of just Cycler extensions to Scriven. So, yes, please read it. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it, it, it's absolutely powerful uh, language. It, while it adds to rendering variants, uh, we pretty much designed it to be able to replace uh, full functionality to give all of that power, put that power in the hand of front-end developers, but then also to do it in a way that they cannot harm your Sitecore instance. Yeah, and as you can see, we uh, well, while introducing Scrim, we also made sure that a lot of like standard CSS classes uh, are now disappeared. So no, you no longer have like the field dash uh, and then the, the, uh, the property name uh, classes in there. You have more control over the, uh, the HTML that's being outputted to the end user. And obviously it also saves you a lot of creating items within Cypher. So uh, you don't define the HTML markup anymore using the Cypher content tree, which, well. Well, you, I mean, those both options are available and they will be available. There are some people who might prefer to work with items. There are some benefits to that, but uh, like regular developers are probably going to prefer the uh, the code side. And you can jump in and out of Scriben. Out of Scriben, you can execute further rendering variants uh, underneath it. You can execute rules, personalization yep. rules. Evaluate. You can evaluate personalization rules, and then show this part or that part of the template based on the based on the, the on the personalization rule that is embedded under Scriven. So all of the functionality of rendering variants should still be there for you usable uh, in Scriven. 